Hi Capricorn, it's El Rock and you have landed on Channel Rockeritaville. Welcome. I am here to do your general timeless energy reading for the week ahead for the sun, moon, and rising sign of Capricorn. A general reading means that if we don't pull out your story today, um, because we are just doing collective energy and we are looking at only the most influential energy in the week ahead. So if this isn't your story, do check out the moon and rising signs, your moon and rising sign on the channel because there might be something there for you. Finally, I want to thank my new and returning subscribers and those of you just dropping in to check out the channel. Thank you for being here. And also thank you for your likes and your comments and of course your subscriptions because they do help the channel grow. So without further ado, what is the most influential energy in the week ahead for Capricorn? And what came out is Yarrow, it's pocket of protection. So your most influential energy or your most prevalent energy in the week of he ahead is that you are um, in the energy of being protected. So let's see if we can find out a little bit more about what it is you might be being protected from or what other energies are in your week. Oh, interesting. Okay, cycles. Yeah, everybody's getting cycles right now. Some version of a cycles card. Um, so you have Black Bear, which is syncing with the cycles. So understanding what cycle you're in where you're at what is the season of your life right now capricorn are you in a spring season where everything is new growth are you in a fall season where things are beginning to decay and die away are you in a winter season where everything is dead and you're waiting for that spring to come in are you in summer where everything feels stable and solid and grounded you first need to know what your cycle is and where you're at in it. So um, a cycle could be something like where you're at in work, where you're at in school, where you're at in a relationship with a family member, a friend, or a intimate romantic relationship. So um, it's going to be up to you, Capricorn, to understand where you're at and which cycle you're focused on because there is a protection happening here for you with Yarrow. Now the other card that came out is Red Salmon, which is navigating life with determination. So, you know, wherever you're in the salmon in this cycle, they are returning to, um, to lay their eggs, to, um, to finish this aspect of their cycle. So, the salmon, when they're born, they're born upriver, right? And then they they go into the ocean and they spend most of their life as an ocean-dwelling animal. And in the ocean, they're, do they're dodging sharks, they're dodging predators, and then they swim back upstream to lay their eggs. Now, when they, when they swim back upstream, they're dealing with things like eagles and bears and rivers and dams. And so whatever it is you've got going on, um, Capricorn, you have been in a long cycle of predatory behavior. And you have managed to dodge the sharks jump the dams, swim around the bears, swim below the eagles so they can't reach you, and you continue to take this journey with yourself, Capricorn. And throughout this time, I want to remind you that wherever you're at in your cycle, are you in the ocean? Are you in the main part of your life? Are you towards the end of your life where you're swimming back upstream to you know, really focus on your legacy, that's, that too is part of a cycle. And you have to remember that the salmon takes such a long journey and whatever it is, whatever this journey is, Capricorn, you are protected. Um, it's divine protection. And I think it's important that you know that because clearly with the red salmon and all of the sort of Diversity is not the right word. Um, 
just struggle that you've been through. Um, you have been protected through all of it, even though it was a painful, difficult cycle. Um, so, yeah. And then you have quaking asp and we are one, which to me is, you know, an indicator of perhaps family or a singular um, intimate relationship because of the um, two hands. But um, it also speaks, this card, the quaking aspen, speaks to the relationship of aspens in terms of the fact that they, that they live in a grove and yet they all hold hands underground. So while they exist separately above ground, there is um, an intimate connection that's never broken. Um, that's, that's what I'm getting here that is more divinely orchestrated, that it's that it's part of the protection that has gotten you through this cycle, um, whatever this is. It's part of the energy or the influence that, you know, the nourishment that, that you needed. Um, so that's really quite beautiful. And, um, you are, so mugwort is at the bottom of the deck which is between dreams. Who did this come out for before? I can't remember. Um, so I would say Capricorn based on this card right here, the between dreams card um, with the dream catcher there um, and the plant that you are at, actually at the end of a cycle. I'm venturing to say because you are, are in that place between no longer and not yet. And that puts you in between dreams. That puts you in kind of almost a stasis, um, which is which is a great place to be, right? You don't have to make any choices right now. Um, and the card underneath that is keen into wisdom, right? It's understanding your blind spots. Little Al was a guardian to the goddess. Um, was it Athena? Nope. Artemis. Are, it was started with an A. But what Little Al did is Little Al brought wisdom to the goddess because even a goddess has a blind spots. So no matter who you are or no matter how you cross your T's and dot your I's, you're still vulnerable to blind spots, Capricorn, and that's okay. Um, finally, um, there was a, a fresh start here at the um, bottom of the deck. I'm just start there. It seems to be telling a story. We have remembrance, fresh start, little Al keen into wisdom and between dreams, which is the indicator to me that you are at the end of a cycle that you've, you've closed your cycle out. So this would be a card in the past position. Let's get some clear fires and see what else you have going on here. So you are protected. You're at the end of the cycle. That's taken a ton of determination, a ton of willpower. Um, the princess of swords. And now you're in a place where you're being invited to be creative. That's where between dreams, where mugwort comes into the storyline right here. Um, you are being asked to tap into something greater it is it is that place where you get to go and remember what it is that that you always wanted for yourself how to fulfill yourself um all of these are available through this princess through this creativity through this manifestation work that you're doing capricorn what else do we have for Capricorn for the week ahead, please. Let's give it a shuffle. Capricorn, please. Clarifiers for the week ahead. Tell us more about the cycle, the determination, and let's find out a little bit more about Quaking Aspen. We are one. Clarifiers, please, for Capricorn for the week ahead. Oof, there's a lot of cards falling out right now. 
All right, let's pick up what we have. Let's take a peek at the bottom of the deck first. Bottom of the deck, the child. I love it. That's beautiful, Capricorn. That's just what we talked about. We talked about you being between dreams. We talked, we talked about you being in the creative space. And the child talks about, you know, that will to move forward. It's the full card in the normal tarot. And in this card, it really refers to going back to um, the essence of who you've always been before you sort of lost those pieces, the child pieces of yourself that became part of everyday life, working, you know, taking care of family and all of the, all of the responsibilities that kind of drag you down and you just have a sense of renewal um, coming for you, Capricorn. That's really beautiful. Let's take a look at your other cards here. Wow, the Empress. So this is somebody really nurturing. Um, this is uh, Venus. It is... I feel like this is your We Are One um, Capricorn. Let's find out what else we have. Oh, yeah. You've been in Nine of Swords. You've been in a really cruel situation. I feel like this goes with your um, Red Salmon here in regard to um, the predators and the determination through which you've had to navigate. And you have been in the mind space. And in the mind space with the Nine of Swords, you know, you've probably experienced sleepless nights and maybe still are. You have been, um, not only have you experienced cruelty just through the sheer nature of what it means to be a human and to live, um, but you're being cruel to yourself in your own mind. And your invitation here is to um, really try to rest your mind space and get back into this space of creativity with the Princess of Swords because she's wanting you to focus on your, your essential self, on your child self. Um, also with the um, Empress is, this is a really nurturing, loving energy. It's fertility, it's new things coming in, it can indicate pregnancy. Um, and with that, it's it's a sense of, wholeness, right? Of all is right with the world. And this nine of swords is indicating to me that even if things are right in your world day to day, that something in the mind space is, is haunting you. It's torturing you. And your invitation is to transmute that mind torture energy into something healthier for yourself. It's about your goals and your dreams and what's coming. Because you do have the two of pentacles here, the two of discs, which is an indicator of change. It's this constant flow, this ebb and flow, right? You're going back and forth, back and forth. And then you have the center point where everything meets again, right? It's your, it's your fresh start that space right there and you're in the midst of trying to mix the two and gain the balance there Capricorn so you do have change coming yeah transmute we just talked about that transmuting with the princess of discs um this is the this is going from a barren landscape to fertility again um Capricorn you may be dealing with pregnancy or somebody who um a mother figure perhaps um, but you're being asked to transmute, number one, the torture in your mind space, the cruelty, the heartbreak, the fear, the doubt, the worry, um, that can be transmuted through just navigating with your determination. You are, you're a Capricorn. You're one of the hardest working, most determined in the Zodiac, um, so I'm not surprised to even see this card for you. It's very, let's see here, let's, it's very Capricorn, quite frankly. The Way, this is a holy card. It is an ascended card, um, the top of the deck. And you are being called into a state of prayer or meditation.
meditation to really, again, get in the space of creativity. Being between dreams is not an easy place to be. It can feel really uncomfortable. It can feel like you don't have a sense of direction when in fact you do. With this Princess of Swords here, your sense of direction is within. It is tapping into what it is you want and shedding light on that. It is focusing your light where you want to put your attention. Um, there is an old saying that, um, you know, if you're choosing between two dragons, the dragon that you choose to feed is the one that wins. So are you feeding this dragon, which is the dragon of the mind space that's cruel and unforgiving, or are you tapping into that creativity, which is taking you to your next level um, where you're determined to go anyway. You're going, to, you're going to go there regardless, Capricorn, because that's your nature to do that. Um, and through prayer, you can gain those insights through meditation, through a time of internal quiet, whether that's in your car, on your commute to work, you know, whether that's a mindful, you know, sitting down and meditating, however it is you do that, um, you know, do the affirmative prayer. Thank you for getting me through this, the close of this cycle. Thank you for what's next, even though I may not know what that is. Thank you for returning me to my essential self. And that prayer, that affirmative prayer, wow, brings in the wizard. What a way to close that out. And are you ever manifesting Capricorn? You are harnessing the power of the universe. You have the power of creation in your fingertips. So good for you for doing exactly what this, what this is guiding you to do. Remember that all energy lives in the field of potential until you make it manifest. You make it manifest with your thoughts and your feelings, what you're thinking about and what you're feeling about even more. So if your thought brings on an emotion of joy or happiness, then your momentum begins to shift in that direction, Capricorn. If your mind brings in something that's scary and burdening to you, you're going to flip your, you're going to flip your magician, right? You're not going to be using your manifestation power to its highest potential. So when you're in the creation process, which you absolutely are Capricorn, you're being asked to hold yourself in a state of affirmative prayer and assume that it is, it is already done and to also feel that it's done. Feel into those feelings of goodness. Feel into those feelings of success. Stop focusing on everything that it took to get you there and just focus on where you're at in the moment and then begin to create with it. Begin to focus on where it is you're going, Capricorn, because you've got the power of the wizard and you are in creation right now. So good for you. Go get them, Cappy. <laughs> Let's find out what kind of self-care Capricorn's being guided into in the week ahead. So we've got the Princess of Discs, um, transmuting out of this cycle, your endings, your new beginnings. With every with every door that closes, another one opens. And sometimes we don't have this sight to see that that door's open. All we can do is see to take the next step until we arrive at that open door, Capricorn. So what is um, Capricorn being guided? How can Capricorn best care for themselves in the week ahead? We're using the um, self-care cards here. Um, tell me more about how Capricorn can care for themselves in the week ahead, please. Capricorn. How can they love on themselves and love on themselves the best in the week ahead, please? Yeah. Embrace your confusion. Let there be peace in not knowing all the answers. Yeah, you remember you're between dreams, Cappy. You don't have to know all the answers. You're harnessing the power of creation. This is your field of possibility. This is your field of potential. This is where everything that you want 
lives until you choose to feed it and then it begins to grow, right? Every seed that you've ever had lives in your field of potential Capricorn. All you have to do is nurture it. Peace. Yes. Wow. Embrace your confusion. Let there be peace in not knowing all the answers. You don't have to know the answers. The answers come, Capricorn. You just have to be willing to wait for them. <laughs> and the card that popped out was patience. Yes, you just have to be willing to wait for them. Be willing to pass up good for great. Don't settle. It's okay. Capricorn, it's like knowing that you want, let's say some, this is a terrible example because I'm not, don't know anything about TVs, but the ultra deluxe, super smartest smart TV you can get, right? And what you really, like, you've already got a TV, but you want another TV, and then you just settle for a semi-smart TV instead of the one you really wanted. Don't, don't pass up good for great. Hold off for what you want. You're a creator, Capricorn. You've got this. You're working on it. You don't have to speed up your results just because you're not getting them immediately. Enjoy the process. All right, intent. Focus your energy. There is amazing power and in strong intention. That's part of your prayer and part of your magician here, right? Your intention is, you know, today I'm going, let's say for instance, you are starting a business Capricorn and your intention is to go out and get your business license. You follow through with that step by step, right? You know, thank you for giving me the energy. Thank you for giving me the resources to do this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And as you go deeper into gratitude and setting your intentions and then acting on them, the more they will begin to show up in your life. Anything else for self-care? So you are focusing your energy with intention. You're finding peace and you're, you're getting your, that patience is there, right? This is the great thaw. When we talked about cycles earlier, right? Black bear, the energy of black bear, who likes to feast on the salmon. Um, see all that cold back there and see the melting ice here in the water. And there's signs of spring, right? So if you're at the end of a cycle, you're coming out of a winter time in your life, Cappy. And having the patience to see yourself through that so that you can get the great things that you really want for yourself. Um, that's just part of allowing. That's part of letting it come to you. You don't have to work so hard for it. You go and you work really, really hard and then you do everything that you can, Capricorn, and then you stop and you allow and let all of the pieces that you can't control fall into place. Your last card, and this is a beautiful card to send you out on, is courage. Look at that. Look at those lions. Look at that fierceness. That's a warrior right there. Take the leap. Your courage will see you through. So whatever this dream is, whatever's next for you, whatever your springtime is, Capricorn, your courage is going to see you through. It's okay. You can take the leap when you're ready to take the leap. Right now... You're just being called to be a creator. That's all. Just go be a creator. Everything else will fall into place. Sending you so much love, Capricorn. Have a beautiful week ahead, and thanks for stopping by.